Hi, in the previous video, we have looked at multiple ways of um, making the deployments as well as making uh, inferences of machine learning models using SageMaker. We have mainly used uh, the estimator uh, to deploy the model, but as we have discussed, the estimator is only available within the notebook from which we have trained the model, right? But that's not the generic use case because we might want to deploy the model at a later time in a maybe a different environment uh, for the production system, right? So today we will see how we can do that, okay? All right. So after training the model, we have the model artifacts, right? So we have the model artifacts at some S3 location. And then we also know which instance we have used for uh, training the model, right? As I said, in some cases, we can use the same instance for inference uh, for inbuilt algorithms. But for it, say, uh, if it's not an inbuilt algorithm like this XGBoost, let's say if it's a TensorFlow or, uh, uh, or PyTorch or Hugging Face, etc. Uh, the training instance and inference instances will be different, right? We will cover all those in the future uh, videos. But for this inbuilt XGBoost algorithm, uh, the training and uh, the inference uh, uh, algorithm uh, instance is the same. All right, uh, so we have the model artifacts. We know where this code can run or uh, the Docker image, right? Now, when we deploy the model using uh, the estimator, three things happen, you remember, right? First, it has created the model, then it created the endpoint configuration, and finally, the endpoint. So today we will see how we can those, do those three steps uh, explicitly ourselves, okay? So again, uh, I want to create uh, a unique name for the model. So we are simply using some prefix and appending with the timestamp. Now we are going to use the SageMaker client, uh, which uh, you can see uh, from Boto3, we can access uh, the SageMaker client and this is the runtime, okay? So use the SageMaker client to create the model. Uh, so to create the model, we need only two things. Where are the model artifacts and where that code can run, right? So this is the model path, which is where we have uh, uh, the artifacts. And then this is the Docker container image, right? So we are just giving it a name. And uh, in order to execute this code, we need to supply the role uh, ARN as well, right? So we have created a model here using the model artifacts. That's step number one, right? And then once this model is created, we can do the batch transform, right? Because in order to do the batch transform, uh, we don't need to have any endpoints, right? So we first create uh, the transformer simply using the model name because the, we have just created the model. So we just use that model name uh, the instance count and the instance type and where do we want to write the output to, okay? Once we created the transform, we simply call the transform uh, transformer with the transform supplying uh, the input data, okay? So that will take about five to seven minutes as we discussed because it's going to create an instance and prepare the model uh, before making the inferences, okay? All right, now let's look at the endpoint. So first we need to create the endpoint config name, right? So here we are again creating a name for the endpoint configuration and then using the SageMaker client to create the endpoint configuration. So we have a name and then uh, here we can have multiple versions of the same model. We can, we, it can, we can make it serverless. Uh, etc. We will see the benefits of serverless uh, uh, in the future videos and how to do that etc. Right. So this is version one of the model and we simply supply the model name which we have created previously and again providing uh, uh, the instance count, the initial instance count as well as the instance type. Okay. Uh, 
so we have created uh, uh, the endpoint configuration okay now we are actually going to create uh, the endpoint again create a unique name for the endpoint name and use SageMaker client to create the endpoint okay and the endpoint configuration will contain uh, all the information so we simply supply the endpoint configuration and we just uh, give it uh, a name here right all right so that has created the uh, endpoint now it will take some time uh, again uh, five to seven minutes uh, to prepare the instance uh, to prepare uh, the mo model uh, uh, art i mean to download the model artifacts and to make it executable etc so we can use this get waiter uh, uh, to keep checking uh, if uh, when the endpoint is uh, created right so the endpoint is being created and then from this point uh, it will be the same so the way we create the endpoint uh, uh, is different and it depends on are we using uh, the SageMaker estimator which is available within uh, the notebooks from which we have trained the model or the more standard method uh, is what we just discussed so it's this three step method so in step one we use the model artifacts and the docker image to create the model okay and then we create uh, the endpoint configuration and uh, the important pieces of information here are this initial instance count and the instance type we provide the model name so we have created the endpoint config and finally we create the endpoint name by supplying the endpoint configuration okay and then uh, the inferences uh, those are exactly the same now we can delete the endpoint uh, configuration and endpoints from the SageMaker client so first we delete this endpoint name or the endpoint uh, by supplying the endpoint name and then we can also delete the endpoint configuration okay now sometimes we might want to de uh, delete simply the endpoint so that uh, we don't get charged uh, when we are not using it and we can keep the endpoint configuration there is no charge for keeping the endpoint configuration now if we want to create the endpoint again we can simply use this endpoint config so we don't need to create the model and endpoint config again okay so just delete the endpoint uh, the actual endpoint but you might want to keep the endpoint configuration so that you can create uh, uh, the endpoint again let me show you this uh, on the ui okay okay let me go to the console okay so as we discussed let's say this endpoint now let's say we have this endpoint config and we have already deleted the endpoint now we want to create uh, the endpoint from this config so simply open it and apply it to an endpoint uh SageMaker keep changing you uh, it used to be create an endpoint but let me see what happens okay not this one maybe we'll go here create an endpoint okay all right so create an endpoint here you give a name and here we can choose uh, use an existing endpoint configuration or create a new one uh, because we have lots of uh, uh, existing ones so choose this option then these are all the endpoint configs so choose uh, choose the one you want and then simply select the endpoint config and finally create the endpoint so this way um, you can create uh, and delete the endpoints uh, easily without uh, incurring any charges okay so there might be a you reason you might want to delete the endpoint but not the endpoint configuration okay uh, all right that's all for today thank you very much